Hello everyone, my name is Toby, I make Victoria 3 videos on YouTube, and today I'm collaborating with Paradox Interactive to tell you all about the brand new feature Power Blocks in the 1.7 patch and Sphere of Influence expansion. So what is a Power Block? In Sphere of Influence, Power Blocks are groups of countries all united under the influence of a single powerful nation. In this video, you'll learn about creating a new Power Block, how to manage and maintain your Power Block once you have it, and how to expand your Power Block throughout the world. When you create a power block, the first thing you need to do is establish a style. We can't have you out there expanding your influence on the world stage if you don't look good doing it. Power blocks offer a vast amount of visual customization for you to choose from. In Sphere of Influence, you'll be able to customize your power block's name, emblem, color scheme, map pattern, and even your very own power block statue. I was able to make this absolutely beautiful creation, and I even got to build them in all my states for everyone to see. Once you have your visual designs just how you want them, you'll need to determine the kind of power block you want to create. The type of power block you create is determined by what is known as the Central Identity Pillar. The Central Identity Pillar defines the purpose of and benefits you and your power block members will receive. Central Identity Pillars range from a trade league, sovereign empire, ideological union, military treaty, or religious convocation, each having their own unique set of bonuses and benefits. Once you have your central identity pillar picked out, your last step is to assign a principal group. Principal groups act as smaller versions of the central identity pillar and offer even more benefits to power block members. These buffs range from benefits to trade, construction, research, colonization, mortality rate, infrastructure, and much more. Once your power block is up and running, you'll need to manage it correctly to keep it around. The primary way of maintaining your power block is through cohesion. Cohesion is a new metric unique to power blocks. Each power block will have a level of cohesion ranging from 0 to 100. The more cohesion you have, the more stable your power block will be. Leaders running power blocks with high levels of cohesion will gain access to special power block actions and have a much easier time inviting nations to join them. You'll need to be selective with who you choose to invite though, as each type of power block maintains their own cohesion levels differently. So in order to maintain your cohesion, you'll need to remain aware as to who you do and do not invite. Once you've got your power block established and stable, you'll want to begin growing it. You'll be able to invite nations to join your power block by taking advantage of the new leverage system included in the 1.7 patch. Every power block will hold a certain level of leverage over nations in the game. Leverage is calculated based on a number of different factors. Diplomatic packs such as defensive packs, trade agreements, alliances, foreign investment packs, and so on will all grant a flat amount of leverage over another country. Other aspects such as discrimination against religion and culture, the strength of favorable and unfavorable lobbies, and economic dependency will all have scaling factors to the amount of leverage they add or subtract. Finally, the level of cohesion your power block has and your influence surplus will also grant another percentage based leverage modifier. Once your power block holds enough leverage over a nation, you will be able to invite that nation to join your power block. This is not the only way to expand your power block though. You'll also be able to grow the number of buffs you and your block members gain by obtaining mandates. As the leader, you will be able to exchange these mandates for additional principal groups, increasing the overall benefit you and your block members gain from being in the power block. The rate at which you gain mandates can be increased by inviting more nations to your power block, with more powerful nations increasing that rate more than weaker ones. Each power block will have a maximum of four principal groups active at any given time, allowing you to customize your power block even further with thousands of possible buff combinations to choose from. Alright, you're now ready to create your very own power block in Sphere of Influence. Be sure to subscribe to the channel for more Victoria 3 updates, and I'll be seeing you all in the next one as we discuss foreign investment and the new building ownership revision in Sphere of Influence. I'll see you all there.